Have you ever watched a science fiction movie where a computer or robot suddenly becomes self-aware and starts destroying humanity? That's the plot of every AI movie out there, but in real life it's unlikely that AI will ever gain consciousness. That's because intelligence and consciousness are two completely different things. Intelligence is the ability to solve problems and make decisions. Consciousness, on the other hand, is the ability to experience emotions and sensations. Just because a machine is intelligent doesn't mean it can feel pain or happiness. So don't worry, it's improbable that your computer will start feeling emotions anytime soon. In the 2004 movie I, Robot, Will Smith's character finds himself in a tense confrontation with an android over humanity's creative abilities. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? Thanks to advances in technology, machines are capable of creating art and music that would have once been thought unimaginable. Have a listen to this piece of music created entirely by an AI. I would say it sounds pretty impressive. Have a look at what a Reddit user named Sutric managed to create with the use of stable diffusion AI. The level of detail and realism is just insane. He asked AI to create the homeless version of them. Meta recently caused quite a stir with the release of Galactica, a language system designed for science writing. It was supposed to crank out research papers and Wikipedia articles with ease. Still, things took a turn for the bizarre when testers discovered that it was producing some seriously sketchy content. Within three days of its release, Meta was forced to shut it down. Among other things, Galactica was spitting instructions on making napalm in the bathtub. Wikipedia articles extolled the virtues of being white and discussing bears living in space. It was a wild ride and got people thinking about the potential dangers of machine-generated misinformation. It's hard to keep track of false information written by humans, so what happens when machines start producing it and it sounds more and more human-like? It's a scary thought. The next generation of OpenAI's language model, GPT-4, is supposed to improve over GPT-3 vastly. It will be released in the next few months, causing a lot of buzz. Despite all the hype, some experts say GPT-4 is not much bigger than its predecessor. According to a research paper by DeepMind, sometimes it's better to have a smaller model trained on a massive dataset rather than a colossal model with many parameters. Data is the new oil. It's become a bit of a cliché, but there's actually a good reason for the comparison. Just like oil, data is a finite resource. This is especially true when it comes to artificial intelligence and language models. The more data we use to train these models, the better they get. DeepMind's Chinchilla project has shown us that the key to building really powerful language models isn't just about making them bigger, it's about feeding them more data. Have you ever wondered how much language data is out there that we can use to train AI models? Some researchers have tried to estimate it. According to one group, there's somewhere between 4.6 and 17.2 trillion tokens, like words or phrases, of high-quality text data in the world. This includes books, scientific papers, news articles, Wikipedia and tons of stuff from the internet like web pages, blogs and social media. But it's only the good stuff, stuff that meets certain quality standards. Another estimate puts the total number of tokens at 3.2 trillion, but really we don't know for sure, it's just an educated guess. Autonomous vehicles are finally here. You can actually hail a driverless car, just like you would with Uber or Lyft, and take a ride through the streets of San Francisco. All right, here it is. Our first driverless cruise ride. It's all thanks to the cruise app. Right now they only offer these rides at night, but they're planning to expand to 24-7 service in the near future. And get this, their competitor Waymo is right on their heels. After all the hype and false starts in the world of self-driving cars, it's finally happening. Who would have thought? Can you imagine a future where self-driving cars are the norm and human-operated vehicles are a thing of the past? 
It's kind of mind-blowing to think about how these autonomous vehicles will be able to communicate with each other and make split-second decisions to avoid accidents. It'll be like a giant interconnected machine working together to keep us all safe on the road. And imagine being able to pay other cars to get out of your way if you're in a rush. Talk about convenient. But with all these improvements comes the possibility that human driving may eventually become illegal. It's not hard to see how self-driving cars could potentially be a lot safer than human-operated ones. So it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that we could see laws passed to prohibit people from driving on public roads. It's kind of sad to think about how driving could eventually become a hobby reserved for private areas, like how horse riding is today. But if it means fewer accidents and a safer transportation system, it may be worth it in the long run. Have you ever wished you could converse with an AI to find what you're looking for online instead of typing out the search query and getting a bunch of links in return? If I ask it who is Matt Vidpro AI and I click the search button here, it actually gives you an answer here that is a direct answer to the question I asked. Unlike Google here, Google's just going to give you a list of websites. Well, that's the idea behind conversational search. It's a new way of thinking about the search that's gained much traction with the rise of ChatGPT. Imagine being able to ask for what you want and get instant personalized recommendations from an AI assistant. Sounds pretty cool, eh? There's still one major hurdle standing in the way of conversational search becoming mainstream. Accuracy. Even the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, has warned against relying on ChatGPT for anything significant at this time. And this came out as I was working on the video. Microsoft is bringing the AI capabilities of OpenAI's ChatGPT to Bing, their search engine, in an effort to take on Google. This game-changing feature is expected to launch by the end of March. U.com, Character.ai, Metaphor and Perplexity are just a few companies looking to challenge Google and shake up the search industry. These startups are definitely ones to watch as they strive to make their mark in the world of search. Tesla made waves in the world of humanoid robotics with the debut of its Optimus robot at its AI Day in September. Elon Musk has even said that this robot could be worth more to Tesla than its entire car business. Uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are like se semi-sentient robots on wheels. Full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, neural nets, recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world. Uh, it, it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. If we focus too much on developing AI and not enough on our consciousness, we might end up with sophisticated bots that are good at manipulating us. If a computer could figure out precisely what you're afraid of or what buttons to push to get you to buy something. It might sound like something out of a science fiction movie, but it's already happening to some extent. It's unlikely that we'll have to deal with a robot rebellion anytime soon, but we might have to be more aware of the way that AI could be used to manipulate us in more subtle ways. Tech giants like Google, Facebook, Baidu and ByteDance are in a race to acquire as much data as possible, using their status as attention merchants to capture our attention and gather information about us in exchange for free services and entertainment. But their ultimate goal isn't just to sell ads, it is to amass vast amounts of data, which is even more valuable. Instead of being their customers, we are their product. Facebook is accused of inciting a genocide in Myanmar. TikTok, Snap and YouTube facing questions about how well they protect children. Instagram reportedly knew the app was fueling body image and other mental health issues. These tech giants use our data to create highly personalized and targeted experiences, which can be both beneficial and detrimental. They use our data to personalize content, make recommendations, and offer tailored services that are meant to make our lives easier. However, this can also be used to manipulate us and exploit our data for their own gain. We find ourselves browsing Instagram and TikTok and ignoring our sensations, like the taste of coffee in the morning or a beautiful view during a road trip. Have you ever stopped and thought about all the algorithms that are constantly watching us? They track where we go, what we buy, and even who we meet. It's kind of creepy. And it's only going to get worse. For the first time in history, books are reading people, rather than vice versa. As you read a book on Kindle, 
Kindle is following you, and Kindle, which means Amazon, knows which pages you read slow, which pages you read fast, and on which page you stop reading the book. And based on that, Amazon have quite a good idea of what you like or dislike. All thanks to big data and machine learning, which are helping these algorithms get to know us better and better. The scary part is that they could control and manipulate us once they know us better than we know ourselves. And there's little we can do about it. It all comes down to a simple fact. If the algorithms genuinely understand what's happening inside us better than we do, they'll have the upper hand. The only thing we can do is try to stay ahead of the technology by educating ourselves and understanding how these technologies work. We must be aware of the implications of these algorithms, and make sure that we are using them responsibly and ethically. We must also ensure that our data is secure at all times, so that it isn't used to manipulate us in any way. It's up to us to protect our privacy and autonomy, and to make sure that the algorithms are not used to gain an unfair advantage over us.